you, you, you marked it to speak on House Bill 10. Just at least have mentioned House Bill 10 somewhere in this process would, 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 would make us where, um, make it relevant, if, if that sounds fair. Yeah, that sounds fair. That's I appreciate your direction on that, uh, and we were already kind of, kind of you, yeah. got you. Just making sure. First time yes, seeing you all here. So, for yes. clarifying. I really appreciate it. Um, first of all, I just want to thank um, the committee for letting us speak. Um, we are uh, here as part of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, we are in favor of government transparency uh, at all levels. Um, so we believe that uh, certainly the principles in HB 10, um, we, we support those. Uh, Nicely done. Thank you. Um, so uh, we also, um, in uh, we consider transparency to be a, uh, a sort of a moral issue as well, not just a fiscal issue or a uh, administrative issue. And the Poor People's Campaign is uh, focused on morality. As it's, uh, it, I can't, I know people can't see the shirt, but it's Poor People's Campaign National Call for Moral Revival. Um, we, uh, you know, like um, most of the citizens of the state, have been following closely the regular sessions or the special sessions. Um, and we hear a lot of uh, political rhetoric being thrown around. Um, we hear a lot of talk about money. Now, I know this is a budget. You're going to get a lot of political rhetoric. You're going to get a lot of talk about money. Um, that's, you know, at the center of it. Uh, what I don't hear, and what I don't think that most of my fellow uh, citizens hear, is talking about right and wrong. Um, you're the leaders of our state. Uh, when you only fight over politics, when you only talk about money, that sets a tone for the rest of the people who live here. Um, I don't ever hear anybody talking about a moral obligation as human beings to try to care for one another. Um, we talk about putting nursing homes on the chopping block, uh, hospitals, education. Um, these are moral issues. They aren't just line items in a budget. And uh, I can't, obviously, I'm not trying to um, direct you yes or no on a certain bill, except for HB 10, which I believe in. Um, uh, well done again, two for two. <laughs> um, what I am asking, what we are asking, what the Poor People's Campaign is asking, and, and I don't want to speak uh, on behalf of the state, state, you know, citizens of Louisiana, but I believe what the citizens of Louisiana would want you to do is when you're talking about things to cut, revenue, all of these line items, all these issues in a budget, that really the first thing you think about is the morality of what you're doing, of the human beings. These are people with hopes and dreams and fears and loves. And when you cut something, you're hurting them. And I personally, and I think the people behind me and a lot of the people in the state believe that is immoral. Um, so I ask you to think about that. I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, in the interest of this, who also likes HB10 as well. I love, uh, HB10 is wonderful. <laughs> and the good thing about it, it says it's about transparency of the budget. One of the things people need to be clear about how much of this budget goes for rich people welfare while taking things away from poor people? How does the, how does the budget transparency show the dollars that are going to? consultants and other kind of things that are not serving the needs and interests of those whose necessities of life are being denied to them. Those people who go to a hospital and get put out of the hospital and have no way to get the medicine or, or to get the things they need. All of the people that are too rich to get Medicaid but too poor to pay for the insurance, these things are moral questions of the budget. And so the transparency I would like to see is a budget that says, here's how much money went to help the big people get the necessities of life. And here's how much money went to something else. And, and that you would fight for a budget that when we look at that, would show this legislation fought for those with the least to be able to survive and have the necessities of life. That's the moral budget Thank you. Okay, and you all said you also had a, 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 a box. Yes, I'm sorry. So, so that, that box would reflect the receipt of such statements in, as of the date and time as of today. So this that, is a... That, a that, as, as it relates to, to House Rule 13, 1433, 
That's what you were saying that that does. Yes, it's uh, well, so it's, we it's, will be able to receive it now because it does that. Yeah, eleven thousand eight hundred forty-five signatures in favor of a moral budget. There you go, and it now now fits in rule of House Bill fourteen thirty-three, just like that. Okay, perfect. Thank good, you. Very good much. thinking. All right, board is clear. Thank you all. All right, that's on both sides. Major Thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Mr. Representative Smith. I'm sorry, Representative Smith. Thank you. Oh, and we also have Representative Simon. Did you? Did you? Hit? Okay, gotcha. Well, Smith, is this okay. for the folks that come right back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coming back, gentlemen. I, I I didn't see Representative Smith nor Representative Simon's buttons pressed, so I apologize for asking you all to leave and come back. But Representative Smith has no a question for you instead of Representative Simon. I, I just have a question to ask: If um, you believe that the transparency of our budget is going to uh, provide you with more information on what you feel is wrong with our budget, and do you find things that are wrong with our budget now that needs to be fixed? Well, from what I read in the paper, people in nursing homes may be thrown out into the street, that you want to have workfare for food stamps, that uh, uh, the budget does not reflect meeting the needs of people for food, medical care, the necessities of life. Those things are being cut in favor of something else. and. I am middle class enough that I wouldn't mind paying more on a graduated income tax than charge poor people higher sales tax on every necessity that they buy. They already don't have money for enough, and you're going to take 10 or 11% of, of their money before they spend it on necessities of life? At least if you're going to pass it, take it off of food, medicine, and necessities of life, and let it be on the luxuries. I appreciate that. I would just, I would just add, um, you know, I know that one of the things that's been thrown around, uh, certainly during the regular session, I don't know if it's on the docket during the special session, is um, the idea of uh, Medicaid, Medicare fraud. Um, you know, from my understanding, and I've done a, a decent amount of research into this, I'm no expert, but I've read quite a bit, um, every state that has tried to go after that fraud has spent more money um, on, the, on trying to find that fraud than they saved. On, uh, on finding people who were apparently committing fraud. And so I wonder, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, investigating poor people um, who, you know, uh, might or might not be doing that. Whereas um, there are a lot of corporations in this state that get a lot of tax breaks that maybe get those tax breaks um, because they have connections or, you know, lobbying. I, again, I'm just a citizen. It seems to me that they get it through the kinds of back channel deals that I don't like. And, and that's why I asked the question about the taxes, the, the credits and the rebates being. But I appreciate your comments, mm -hmm. and thank, thank you very much for being here. Uh, but but, my, but my, sorry. I have one more thing I wanted to say before we leave today. Uh, I'm finished. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, no, the gentleman, you, have, you have two more folks. That, oh, I'm, sorry, I'm assuming, yeah, Representative Smith, can we come back to you? Yes, on, on, okay, Representative Simon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I do appreciate y'all coming out today and letting y'all thoughts be heard. Um, and, and but when I hear this, when I speak, when I hear about morality, it's almost like it's in conflict with immorality. And when you talk about morality and you don't get what you want or you don't get what you hear, it's almost like the other decision is immoral. And I'm here to tell you that where I appreciate your morality, every decision I make is based in morality. And I am proud to sit here today and fight for those people in Louisiana and put that issue on the line every day on day I'm here. And everybody suffers in this world. Everybody's put out. Now, when we're talking about taking care of the poor, I'm going to be out perfectly honest with you. I'm all about taking care of the poor. I am nothing but taking care of the poor when I'm here. But what we have done is we've expanded that definition of poor so big that when the real poor have to do without, we that's where I have a problem with it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate I that. Myself and I've seen it personally. I bet you and have. We want a moral budget. All right. We with that said, we have morality every day. We want a moral budget. All right, members. We represent the president of the we stand adjourned. Thank you, members. We want a moral budget. We want a moral budget. We want more of us. We want to be here if we were looking out for us. You wouldn't be here if we were taking care of us. We're here because you're not. And the budget doesn't reflect it. The budget doesn't reflect the people. We want more of us. 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 We want more of us.